Well, good morning, church. It is time to begin our worship this morning. If you are with us in, in our auditorium here, we are so glad that you are joining us this morning. If you're watching online, we want you to know that we appreciate you and we're thinking about you all the time. And we are just so happy to be here this morning. It's been a crazy week. We're glad to be back together. And now we're going to stand and start our worship with a song. Would you join me? Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are, to worship. Come, just as you are, before your God. Come. Amen. Be seated, please. Good morning, everyone. Hope you are all doing fantastic. And, uh... By the way, we survived Snowbid 2021, right? There are, I, you know, marketers are always amazing. They already have t-shirts out. You can buy that t-shirt, okay? Um, if you just go to my website, and I, I'm just kidding, just kidding, not really. Um, hope everyone is doing fantastic. It is great to see everyone here um, under roof all together. Um, praise God uh, for this last week. Um, isn't it amazing how God shows his power? Isn't that amazing? It goes from one temperature and then all of a sudden there's ice and snow everywhere and we're hunkered down and, you know, praise God for, uh, at, at least for Terrell, I was praising the uh, city of Terrell every time I woke up in the morning and we had heat. And we had water. Praise God for that. I know some of you uh, did not suffer as well as we did. Um, and, uh, but praise God, God has brought us through that. Um, one quick uh, prayer request. Uh, Ronnie and Debbie Bilbrey um, have asked for prayers uh, specifically for Debbie's back. She goes in for an MRI on Thursday to see what's going on. And so we want to pray that, that they will have answers. And we also want to pray for miraculous healing. We trust God that he is all powerful. And, you know, the beautiful thing about prayer is we either get what we ask for or we get something better from God's perspective. But it doesn't always feel better from our perspective, does it? And, but in, no matter what, though, we trust God. So let's go to God in prayer and then continue on with our worship. Father God, thank you for bringing us here for worship, for this time of worship. But Father, help us to always realize that every moment is your moment. Every moment of our lives is a time of worship. Every word, every deed is glory to you. Help us to live that way, Father. Help us to trust you more. Help us to seek you more. 
Because you have first sought us out and loved us first. Father, as we open up the word here in a few minutes, open up our hearts. Help us to sing unto you praises that you deserve. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. This is our text for this morning. Galatians 1, 6 through 2, 10. I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive, let him be accursed. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. For, if, for I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my former life in Judaism, I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I was advancing in Ju Judaism beyond many my own age among my people. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born and who called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with anyone, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went away into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and, remain, and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown in person to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only were hearing it, he said. He who those, I'm sorry, he who used to persecute us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up because of a revelation and set before them, though privately before those who seemed influential, the gospel that I proclaimed among the Gentiles in order to make sure I was not running or had not run in vain. But even Titus, who was with me, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ Jesus so that they might bring us into slavery, to them we did not yield in submission even for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. And from those who seem to be influential, what they were makes no difference to me. God knows, shows no partiality. Those, I say, who seemed influential added nothing to me. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel to the, un, to the circumcised. For he who worked through Peter for his apostolic ministry to the circumcised worked also through me for mine to the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Only they asked us to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the story of how the gospel is spread, one person to one person. Father, we thank you for your gospel. We thank you for blessing us this morning with it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee, may I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come. And I know by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Never let me wander from thee, never leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear a starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. I'm going to take this song a little bit slower, so watch me. This will be our song before our communion. Oh, how he loves, let me try that again. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Jesus to Calvary did go. His love for mankind to show. What he did there brought hope from despair. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you.
I think it would be the understatement to say that everyone in this building has a lot to be thankful for, for life and health, and particularly for this week. Some of, each of us have had different experiences as far as our family, as far as extended family, and yet each of us have had the blessings of God of life and health. Life isn't always like we would like for it to be, and sometimes life is very difficult. And that brings us not only to the thankfulness of this life and health, but the thankfulness of our God in heaven. <clears throat> How he has continued to bless us and has given us his son so that we might not only have the blessings of this life, but the blessings of eternal life. We have suffered some physical shortcomings, but one thing that we have not suffered is a complete remission of our sins because of the death of Jesus on the cross. As I, from week to week, think about the Lord's Supper, one of the things that I see in my mind is when one of the Roman soldiers pierced the side of Jesus. Although at that time he was dying or near death. And yet that must have been such a physical suffering. But think of the suffering his father God in heaven had. To see that blood gushing out from the side of his physical son. So think about God's sacrifice as we take this communion this morning for the purpose of not only remembering that time, but being thankful for what God has provided for us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, again, we are so thankful for that death. And as we take this bread this morning, help us to be reminiscent of that sacrifice of the body of Jesus is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. We're thankful also for the shedding of that blood, which was for the purpose of the remission of our sins. In Christ's name, amen. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best song. 
Faithful, loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Let's stand from the third verse. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be. Be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Be seated, please. Preacher who does not want. Okay. Here we go. There we go. Uh, once again, a, a preacher who does not want someone to pray for them um, might have an issue. Okay? Let me just say it that way. Um, Landon oftentimes comes up and says, and says, Can I pray for our service today? And, and my only request, Landon, is when you pray for our service, pray for me, okay? That I would preach the word continually, okay? So come on and pray for our service, my friend. Father God, we love you, we praise you, and we hope that you can guide us through this journey and that you can help us come through and be, become a team again. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. I don't know if you heard that. Help us come through and become a team again. I'll take that, buddy. I like that. Thank you. Thank you, Landon. Um, you know, one of the things as we uh, continue on that we are seeking to do is, and I keep using the term, relaunch, right? God has given us and is continuing continuing to give us an amazing opportunity as we look forward to relaunching um, Rockwell and Brand Church of Christ. It's going to be an exciting time as we continue to move that direction. So thank you, Landon, for that prayer. And also, thank you to Rex for taking on the task of reading a very long passage, which is really the, uh, the introduction to Galatians that we started, um, did the first sermon of Galatians, I think three weeks ago, and didn't get through that one and said, we'll do it next week, and now we're finally going to do the rest of the story. Um, at least part two of the story. If you will remember three weeks ago that we talked about this idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit of Jesus. <clears throat> and we added the idea that, yes, it is a pursuit of Jesus from me to Jesus, seeking after Jesus, but really that's not where it starts. And Paul is incredibly clear by saying and by continually using words like grace and the love of God and the direction that that idea actually starts from. It doesn't begin from me seeking God. It begins by God seeking me. 
And the pursuit of Jesus is actually throughout all of Scripture. And we said it begins actually in the very beginning. In the beginning, God moved. He was the first one to pursue creation. He was the first one to seek Adam and Eve in the garden. He was the first one to move and make uh, appropriate clothes for Adam and Eve. He was the, and it just keeps going. And then we see in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And God moved again, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And all the way to Paul's life, in that passage that Rex read, the meat of that passage is Paul telling his own, own testimony. A testimony some of you have actually had to testify, haven't you? Stand in a court of law and put your hand um, on the Bible. I don't know if they do that anymore, but that's the idea. And they say, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God, right? And that's what Paul is saying. This is who I was. This is who I am. I was the greatest persecutor of all. I was zealous. I was passionate about it. In Acts, it says that Paul was breathing in and out murderous threats against God's church. And 20 verses later, it says, and Paul was preaching mightily the gospel of God's grace. This gospel of God's grace that Paul preached to the Galatians. Something really interesting about the book of Galatians is it is different. And the reason that it is different is the first few words that Rex read to us. Most of the time, Paul writes and in such a way he spends a significant amount of time telling the congregation, the church, about his love for them and, and, and kind of who he is and what God is doing and, and how much he cares for them and how he loves them. But in this book, Letter of Galatians, he writes and he doesn't, he, he basically says, Hello, I am Paul, the apostle by the grace of God, and I am very frustrated. He says, I am astonished that you have heard the gospel, that you have grabbed a hold of the gospel, that you have had the gospel, and I am astonished that you so quickly have not forsaken the gospel altogether, but you have added to the gospel. See, the history there is that Paul has preached the gospel to this area called Galatia. It's what we would consider Turkey, central Turkey today. And some from Jerusalem heard that many Gentiles were coming to faith. And so they took it upon themselves to go to this area of Galatia and say, Yes, you are saved by grace through faith, by the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, who, what we just celebrated in communion, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus as a substitution for our own sin. Yes, of course that, and you must become a Jew by circumcision. So, do not miss this. The Judaizers, what we call those of the circumcision group, are not saying you must become a Jew to save yourself instead of being a Christian. But they are saying you must become a Christian and become a Jew. They're not saying instead of. They're adding to. And Paul says, I am astonished that you're buying into that. That you are adding something to the gospel of God's grace. So this morning, 
as we continue on, go ahead. I need to be reminded of Paul's two main questions that he asked all throughout Galatians. The first is this, is Jesus' work enough to save us? We sing the great hymn by Keith and Kristen Getty and Stuart Townend, In Christ Alone. It's one of Ronnie Moore's favorite songs, isn't it? In Christ Alone. But not only is Jesus' work enough to save us, but because of salvation, of justification, is Jesus' Spirit enough to change us? You know, the amazing thing about the gospel of God's grace is not simply that God saves us through Christ alone, but if God's people are saved by Jesus Christ, we are changed by the power of God. I had a conversation, it's been a few weeks ago, a, a, a person called and was talking to me about his marriage and saying his wife didn't do this and his wife didn't do that and his wife didn't do these things and and, and, and gentlemen, if, if, if you come to me and you start talking about all the things that your wife doesn't do, I'm going to back up from that. And by the way, gentlemen, if, if you're not married and you come to me for premarital counseling, um, uh, I'm all for it, but understand where we're going to end up. And it's this. I finally told my friend on the phone, I said, I said man... The problem with your wife is not your wife. The problem with your wife is how you love your wife. If you love your wife well, you will watch her blossom. I want to take that idea it actually jumps over into Ephesians because that's what Paul believes about Christ and the church. Christ has loved us so well and because Christ has loved us well, we blossom. We become the beautiful bride of Christ. You see, the bride of Christ did not get all cleaned up and then Christ loved us, right? Christ loved his bride and she became beautiful. Is Jesus' work enough to save us? Is Jesus' spirit enough to change us? Go ahead. So what is Paul? So why is Paul defending the gospel of God's grace. There's three reasons. Number one, the gospel of God's grace delivers us from false paths to God. Now, I, it, it, let, me, let, me, let me begin by saying this. I have spent 50% of my life lost. All right? Not, not in a spiritual way, in a physical way. All right, when we moved to California, my wife, her greatest fear was I would leave home and want to come back, but I would not be able to find my way home. All right? Now, when we moved to California, I would Google map where I was going, and then I would Google map how to get from where I was going to get home because I could not follow it in reverse order. All right. Now that speaks to 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 all of that, but but here's the thing. No one wants to follow a false map, do you? The 
There is one way to salvation, Paul says. All roads do not lead to Rome. You've seen the bumper sticker that says coexist. Yes, treat people with honor and respect. Allah does not save. The Hindu gods do not save. There is no salvation through the Buddha. There is no salvation in your religion. There is only salvation through Jesus Christ. Go on to these verses. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one. Now I want you to pause right there. Paul is not saying that there are multiple gospels. He said you're turning to a different good news. And he said, and there's no good news at all. But there are some who have troubled you, who trouble you, and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Then he jumps down to verse 11. For I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached to me by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You see, the gospel of God's grace is not something that man has made up, but something that Paul received directly from Jesus Christ. Church, when we take the gospel of God's grace and add anything to it, we don't make it better, we destroy it. Secondly, the gospel of God's grace rescues us from our former ways of life. <clears throat> you see, grace is not simply something that Paul explained. Grace was the thing that explained Paul. Let me say that again. Grace is not simply something that Paul explained. Grace was the thing that explained Paul. And he said, you know who I was. And then Jesus showed up. You see, every one of us who claims Christianity should have a similar story. Now, some of you are like me. I was singing Trust and Obey in my mother's womb. Right? Trust and obey for there's no other way. Right? That was, I would sleep through all of the preacher's sermons, and when tr that invitation song came up, I would pop up and I would start singing. I wore my three piece suit. I had a matching hat with all the old guys, right? And I would set it on the back row in, in all of our little Texas towns in Leonard, Texas, and all these little places where I went to church. My mom instructed me that we don't have to go to church, but we get to go to church. Right, and, and I would wake up, and I would get my little suit on, and I would go. And you know what happened, though? I have an amazing testimony that doesn't say that God saved me from all of my evil ways, but what God saved me from what was my religion. You see, some of you... 
who are here this morning, you look back and you realize that God saved you from your evil ways. Now, here's the irony. I didn't think I needed to be saved because I was a pretty good guy. Right? I was the golden boy in our youth group. I preached my first sermon at 11 years old. Well, I, I, I tried to preach my first sermon at 11 years old and, and looked out at my fifth grade school teacher and ran for the door, literally ran for the door. And then when I was in college, I realized through the teaching of Dr. Bill Jones that I was a wretch and I needed saving. And then the world and scripture opened up to me because I truly learned that I wasn't trying to climb a ladder to God but that God had gloriously condescended to me because he loved me. Church, we just sang the song. And Rex took it slow. Do you know why Rex took it slow? Not for any of you, but for me. Because I'm not that bright. Oh, how he loves you and me. Do you know how he loves you and me? He sent his one and only son to die for you and me. To become our substitute. To do what we couldn't do. To not just be an example to aspire to. But to substitute himself for us. And therefore put his spirit in in us and therefore change us from the inside out here's what here's what religion says religion says this if i have enough rules on the outside my heart will be changed if i have the right rules on the outside my heart will be changed how does that work for us? Not very good, does it? What grace says, what Christianity says, what the gospel says is when Jesus comes into our heart, when we are saved, our outside changes. You see, that's the good news. That's the good news. Legalism exists because people believe that uh, they can't become the people they ought to be depending only on the spirit and the power of God. They need a bunch of rules to follow so they can help God out. Now, sometimes there's moments that I believe that, but then when I read it like that, it sounds really silly, as if God needs my help, right? They believe rules help change people. God changes people. And then finally, thirdly, grace rescues us from Futile pursuits of holiness. External rules can never change internal desires. They can manage behavior, but they cannot change the heart. Only the Spirit of God can change the heart. That is why often before I preach, I pray from Scripture, God Take our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh. The question that Galatians ask is, do we trust that the grace of God manifested in the work of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, is sufficient to produce the kind of people that look like Jesus? Paul is going to ask this over and over and over. 
Is Jesus big enough? Is his spirit big enough? Is he powerful enough? Does he have the right to change the heart of man? And really, the greatest question is this. Is God truly God? And does he have the right and the power to change the heart of man? Or does he need my help? So what does this look like? It's a great story that we all love in the Gospels. There was a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. The original language actually means in the very act of adultery. Now somehow the guy wasn't grabbed or he escaped. But they got the woman, and they brought her to the feet of Jesus, ready to stone her. Can you imagine the embarrassment and the shame and the fear? The only one in the crowd who had the right to judge her and condemn her to death. Takes his time. And then ask an amazing question. He, without sin, throw the first stone. Little side note that it says, it says from the oldest to the youngest. <laughs> Praise God for old guys have wisdom, right? Old guys rule. There's a shirt that says that. And then Jesus asked the woman a profound question. He says, where are your accusers? Does anyone accuse you? And she says, verse 11, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Now here's the danger of religion. Religion says, or legalism says, well, obviously, we miss that part, and we jump immediately to, and sin no more. And we do that. Yes, but what comes first? The blessed love of Jesus Christ. Then neither do I. Jesus believed that, his God, that the gospel of his grace was enough to change the heart of man. Go and leave your life of sin. Not because you're all that great, but because I am. So what's the big questions? Is Jesus' work enough to save us? Is Jesus' spirit enough to change us? Jesus believes this. Do you believe? Do you believe? Pray with me. Father God, we love you. Dear God in heaven, we praise you for loving us so that we would love you. Father God, right now there are some that are wrestling 
And there are some that are thinking that they have gone too far. And they are clawing their way back into your good graces. Help them to open their minds and their heart to the love of Jesus. That Jesus truly is their substitute. Father, there are others who are struggling this morning. And, and, and they have, have believed for too long that the only way that you will love them is if they perform. But Father, help us to grab a hold of the gospel of God's grace, the good news of God's grace, that it is only through Christ alone that we can be saved. As Paul said in another place, in Ephesians, that we are saved by grace through faith and this not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. But Father, there's another group out there that may say, well, if I'm saved by grace, then that means I can do whatever I want. Father, I pray that you will convict them as well. That if we are saved, then we hunger and thirst after your righteousness because your righteousness has been imputed to us. Father, I pray that your word has spoken this morning. And that we will live in such a way that we would impact our, that you would impact our lives, our families, our neighborhoods, our world. It's in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. If there is anything at all that we can do for you this morning, if today is your day to truly commit and to believe that Jesus Christ has truly and totally saved you, we want to hear about that. We want to know that. We want to be a part of that. If we can do anything for you, then come right now as we stand and sing. I love the Lord, for he died my soul to save. On Calvary, his dear life he freely gave. From realms above, Jesus freely came to die, that I might live. Someday with him on high. I love the Lord. He has been so good to me. He gave his life from sin to set me free. No greater love than his could ever be. I love the Lord. Because he first loved me. Amen. Be seated, please. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day, Lord. We thank you for this time that we have to... Come to this church, Lord, and it doesn't matter if we're in the gym or we're in the auditorium, if we're in a classroom, we know that you're with us. Lord, we know that there's several that are hurting right now, Lord, for several different reasons, some that have had COVID and other issues. And as we said time and time again, we know that you are the great physician, Lord. Please restore them to their health so they can get back to their lives, and for those even that might be in our congregation can be back with us, Lord. Lord, be with us as we leave this place this morning. There are so many lost souls that are out there. And sometimes we just have to get out of our comfort zones or whatever things that are going on in our lives and reach out to them. And let them know that they're loved and it'd be great for them to be with us here at this congregation. Lord, in the end, if we're all found faithful, give us a home with you in heaven. And Lord, always keep us humble in your service. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and sing one verse of our closing song, My God is Real. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing that God is real for I can feel him deep within my God is real real in my soul 
My God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. God bless you. Have a great week. Be safe. Ain't no rock, ain't no rock gonna cry in my place. As long as I'm alive, I'm glorified His holy name. Ain't no rock.